I'm rocking the suburbs like Quiet Riot did. I'm pretty good, right? Remember Ben Fold 5, rocking the suburbs? Quiet Riot? <clears throat> ah, yes, the suburbs, my home. And besides being great inspiration for pop rock anthems, the suburbs also play a key role in our modern politics, giving a clear picture of trends that will not only matter, but dominate upcoming national elections. So traditionally, Republicans have dominated the suburbs. I'm rocking the suburbs. One more time. But that has started to change in recent elections. In the 2018 midterms, Democrats retook a majority in the U.S. House largely because of their strength in suburbs in places like Pennsylvania, California, and Florida. The exit poll showed a majority of voters in 2018 were suburban voters. 51% said they lived in the suburbs. Among that group, they divided right down the middle, 49% voting for Republican candidates, 49% voting for Democrats. So you say, it's a tie, what's the big deal? Well, it represents a huge jump for Democrats. So in the 2014 and 2010 midterm elections, Republicans carried suburban voters by 12 points in each election. But cracks started to show in those Republican suburban strongholds in 2016, when Donald Trump carried suburban voters in his win over Hillary Clinton by only a margin of four, 49% to 45%. So Republican strategist Karl Rove, he of the Bush White House, warned his party in November 2018 that that trend spelled big trouble for their future political prospects. Quote, we've got to be worried about what's happening in the suburbs. We get wiped out in the Dallas suburbs, Houston suburbs, Chicago suburbs, Denver suburbs. You know, there's a pattern. Detroit suburbs, Minneapolis suburbs, Orange County, California suburbs. When we start to lose in the suburbs, it says something to us. We can't replace all of those people by simply picking up Minnesota's first congressional district, farm country, and the iron range of Minnesota. Because frankly, there's more growth in suburban areas than there is in rural areas, end quote. And Karl Rove is right. 2018 and 2019 elections, which did further close the gap between Republicans and Democrats in the suburbs, suggests to me that an initial dislike of candidate Trump in 2016 has turned into hardened and outright opposition to him, and by extension, his Republican party, among a significant slice of suburban voters in the three plus years since he won the White House. So while suburban voters have shown that they dislike many of Trump's policies, the biggest being his travel ban, his pledge to build a wall on the southern border, and his child separation policy, they also don't like his tone as president. That's especially true for women in the suburbs who dislike Trump and have taken a uh, not liking to his very aggressive approach to politics. But it's not just Trump that's causing the shift in suburban voters. It's true. For years now, the demographics of U.S. suburbs have been shifting in ways that move it away from traditional Republican party thinking, particularly the version being peddled by Trump. So over the last few decades, suburbs around large urban centers have changed demographically significantly. According to the Brookings Institute, more and more minorities are headed to the suburbs, particularly African Americans. And Despite what Donald Trump's Twitter feed says, his approval ratings among black Americans is, how do I put this? Well, it's not good. That's how I put it. And according to City Lab, immigration is also becoming increasingly suburbanized, it's fascinating, which is very different from the earlier 20th century model of immigrants primarily moving when they came to the country into major US cities and metropolises. And in what is a surprise to exactly no one who has spent time on planet Earth, Trump's polarizing language, build a wall, they're sending criminals and rapists, not their best, doesn't make him the most palatable political choice among immigrant populations, to say the least. So what should frighten Republicans the most is that Trump seems dead set on doubling down on his harsh rhetoric and conservative policies, all of which are designed to ensure that his base never, ever leaves him. But there's a clear cost to that strategy which is currently being borne by down-ballot Republicans across the country. And we can already see some of these effects. In November 2019, Virginia's close elections for control of the state House and state Senate, Democrats took majorities by winning in the suburbs of Northern Virginia and Richmond. And these were places where voters primarily sided with their message on gun control and the need to address climate change. In those places, Trump's over-the-top, base-focused rhetoric just didn't play. Other districts that were previously seen as safe bets for Republicans because they were in the suburbs are also potentially going to be competitive in 2020. Let me give you one example and we'll head to a little place I call Long Island. 
Here, the coming retirement of Republican Congressman Peter King isn't really a huge surprise to those who've been paying attention. King, he's 75 years old and had been rumored to be heading for the exits for months, especially once his daughter and seeming heir apparent for his second district seat wound up moving out of the state to follow her husband's job in North Carolina. But it's not really about King. What really makes the retirement noteworthy is the demographic makeup of his Long Island district. It's Long Island, so it's heavily suburban, and it's also a place where Donald Trump won by nine points in 2016. It's also a place, by the way, that Barack Obama won narrowly in 2008 and 2012. So King's district then provides a useful glimpse into just how good or bad, honestly, things are looking for Republicans in the suburbs. If his seat is one that Democrats are still targeting in the month before the 2020 election, it suggests that the GOP is not close to where it needs or wants to be with suburban voters. Like Karl Rove said, Republicans can't afford to lose the suburbs to Democrats, especially given how much urban areas are growing and how much rural populations are shrinking. Republicans have already lost the House because of the suburbs. If they continue to lose that area, it's hard to see how the party will keep winning national elections pretty much anywhere in the country in the years to come. And that is the point. We make new Point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and now a very special impeachment episode on the weekends. Check them all out.